If you walked out outside right now and asked everyone to give their take on sports betting, some would say it's a scam that they've indulged, but concluded that it's just another form of gambling where you could make some gains here and there, but the house always wins in the end. A few would say they are the parlay god, that they watch a lot of sports, so they make bets, but somehow end up losing. <laughs> Others would confess on how they've never placed a single bet on sports before. And in the same breath, if you asked what they did for income, some would say they have a minimum to decent wage job they show up to. Others would admit they are students in high school, college, some other form of higher education, or would even reveal that they are even unemployed and struggling to find a job in this economy. Now, this isn't to put down whatever it is those people could be doing for a living, but what if I told you that in the mayhem of chaos in the world of sports betting, there are people who cashing out so much so that mega conglomerates of sportsbook corporations have had to make an executive decision to remove certain users from their platform because of how much they were profiting. Well, this is exactly what happened. Us, the sports cappers of sports degens, were issued a notice last week that our prize picks account has been deactivated and we'd no longer be allowed place entries or make future withdrawals on the platform. But now the question is, what kind of picks were we making? Was it backed by any research? How good were the plays? Did we use any sort of AI algorithm? How much money were we actually making? So if you would like to figure out how we got banned, how we knew what picks would hit, and how we've managed to become so good that prize picks had to ban us, come join us on an adventure that reveals the exact sports betting method that broke prize picks and has won us over 20,000. The date is March 25th, 2024, and the Celtics are getting ready to face off the Atlanta Hawks. It's been a few weeks since the Boston Celtics clinched the division in the East, and meanwhile, the Atlanta Hawks are in the hunt to keep their season alive by making the play in. <laughs> Boston didn't have anything to lose, while Atlanta had everything to gain. However, upon closer inspection, it seemed as if the Hawks may have a bit too much on their plate for the number one seed, as before game time, they reported multiple big man injuries that had riddled their team. To us, that's certainly important news, as it indicated that a lot of the load this game would be on the 10-year veteran Clint Capella. This coupled with his promising stats led us to go over on his rebounds plus assists, which we knew he would easily conquer. In the end, the Boston Celtics, which were the projected winners of the game, ended up losing by the dagger of DeAndre Hunter, and of course with assist from the one and only Clint Capella. Final score 120 to 118, with Capella having 15 rebounds plus assists. Next was Treman, an exceptional six foot three guard for the Hornets who were elusively putting on a show, but behind the curtains were in the middle of a monumental tank to end off their horrible season for better draft odds. Conversely, the Cavaliers was one of those teams that were quietly becoming a force to be reckoned with, looking to add another win to their respectable season. Nevertheless, we noticed the sports books had undervalued Tree Man at a conservative 10.5 points when he had consistently dropping an average of around 15 in previous games. This combined with one of his subs out for the game means we loaded our guns and fired over on his points. Loading, loading, strike for the lyrics like I'm bowling, bowling, pushing on, keep rolling, rolling, and when I listen, but I told him, told him. But to our surprise, he scored an outstanding zero points in the first half. Yeah, he had us in the first half for sure. Nevertheless, he showed out in the second half and cooked for our parlay. Loading, loading, strike for the lyrics like I'm bowling, bowling, keep pushing on, keep rolling, rolling, and when I listen, but I told him, told him one more time, your favorite MC's bones are silver. Final score 92 to 115 to Cleveland, with Tree Man tossing up 12. Next, we have Devin Booker with the Phoenix Suns facing against the San Antonio Spurs. 
Some of you might look at us crazy when you see that we went over on books rebounds with the likes of Wembanyama and even Kevin Durant on the floor. What you'd fail to realize is that they had faced off against each other the previous day, and Devin Booker pulled up with seven rebounds. This, as well as his averages in previous games, told us that 4.5 was a no-brainer. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche. It's five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost. I need to know everything. In the end, the Suns had lost in a crazy pandemonium of a game 82 to 85, with D-Book giving us six rebounds to cash us out for a ridiculously easy $600. Over in Philadelphia, things were beginning to look insidious. An incomplete 76ers missing their MVP caliber player, Joel Embiid, versus a healthy behemoth of a team, the Los Angeles Clippers. Our eyes were laser focused on one man only, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi coming off an impressive run of performance didn't deter us from taking a second glance at his PRA, you see. Versus Philly, we noticed the head coach likes to spread the ball and even the minutes more, especially when on the road. With an injured star player, the likes of Paul George and James Harden tend to step up and perform more than usual. We came to the conclusion his PRA was inflated and it was best to shoot for lower. When it was all said and done, he clocked in with a humble 29 PRA and greened us out. Meanwhile, this fossil of a team in Toronto had their hands tied with the New York Knicks. Their season was virtually over, but their hopes of tanking was over, as their record was just good enough to were outpacing the Hornets. Wizards and Pistons was by now impossible. Regardless, we were in need of a gimmick to continue the green streak. Two men fit the criteria. Isaiah Hartenstein and the six foot one guard Miles McBride. Could you guess what prop we took advantage of? Since we expected a blowout from the Knicks, was it their points, assists, steals? No, it was their rebounds. Let me explain. Once again, the sports books had unnecessarily inflated their props because of previous exceptional games they both had. With an anticipated blowout, the coaches would take their star players out with caution of the upcoming playoffs. 11 rebounds for Isaiah and four for Miles was way too much to ask for in this game. In the end, we were right. Isaiah mustered up four and Miles gave in with three, cashing us out for another easy 300, 145 to 100 and one for the New York Knicks. Fuck prize picks, fuck the house. We are on a mission to keep winning.